can we fix it? I hope so. so we've got a free mealer here, which does absolutely nothing. So, those. Let's have a look. Oh, yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? Bit of Mila for us to play with. I got this from Facebook actually, it was on the marketplace and I got there first. And it was free, it's completely and utterly dead. The button, the switch doesn't do anything, it's dead, dead gym, dead, dead, dead. No idea why, it's been in the shed. Took it out now, try and get it working. So what is it? Well if we take the tools out of the way. It's the budget range of Mila. This is sadly their, what they made to be quite cheap. This is an S2111, 1600 watts. There is no ratings plate on it, which I only actually noticed taking out the car just now. So no idea what that's about. But even though it's the budget Mila, it's still not bad. It's all right, it doesn't really flex. Maybe some of the, Panels are a little bit iffy, but then I don't know what life this has led, so this could have, you know, been destroyed. For all I know, in our little broken mealer, we do have a bag. It's not a genuine bag, but for now we can forgive it that it's, it's got the remains of a genuine filter in it. But all the hallmarks of not being well loved at all. <sighs> what have we got here? Well, there is a filter, which again is brand new. It's an air cleaning filter, although well, I haven't actually cut one down this far. But one would say it's actually been cut down a little bit too far because it's coming apart, look at all the layers of the filter. This is probably how manufacturers conjure up the stupid blurbs I do. It. Oh look, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it's got seven layer filtration. Fuck them off. It's got a filter, which is the wrong size, but don't really care about that for now. There's all, oh look, eight layers. Look, there's a post diffuser there as well. <sighs> this is how they do it folks. So one disgusting, dirty, horrible, well used, well abused vacuum cleaner. What else have we got? Well we have these tools. Now this confused the heck out of me when I first got it because the poles were together. And I tried to collapse said poles and couldn't. And that's because there are two separate non-extendable poles, obviously for this budget machine, which is fair enough. This is the clip to store the wands. So, that, as it was when I turned the camera on, you can, Park. No, you can't. You oh, really? Ah. Okay, no, you can't park it if the ones are together because it sits at the back. The idea, obviously, that's, that maybe that's why. No, that's a silly idea. You can't actually do it because the one hits the machine. But the idea is you can collapse the ones and. You know, have a bit of a shorter space, which would be a great idea if, and it's probably a combination of these being so worn, but they don't clip on. They just sort of sit there and very easily fall off. Which is a little bit interesting. It does come off. If that wants to say, they're just so ruddy loose. It's a little bit rubbish. I might 
lose that and pretend it never existed because I don't mind, I can't, well, cause this will be sold, this was obtained to hopefully fix up, do up and sell. And obviously if I hand it over to the owner and then the one falls off, it's just going to not look very good. So we'll lose that. We has the tool holder. Now again, when I got this, I only had the one tool, which is the cheaper, nastier dusting brush, the S5s and the higher end ones come with a lovely horsehair style, this is just plastic, but it's got a tool holder. I did manage to find two, they're not genuine, I thought I had some genuine needle tools, but it seems I don't. Upholstery brush and crevice tool, but I thought, you know what, again, no one's really going to care, um, they do fit on the holder, so it has three tools. The hose is actually broken. Okay, very cheap feeling, but it's missing one of its clips. But that doesn't actually seem to bother it too much. And again, I, mean, I don't have it to you know, try and glue it back on, and I'm not buying a new hose. I think, again, this might just be a shh. Didn't happen. In fact, I could. The hose is the same, both ends look. So, you can have it like that, with the hole there. Well, I'll probably have the hole down there. The actual one end is possibly the only unchanged thing from the S5s, like the, the, the lower spec S5, my mum's, has this end. Very nice end, I prefer, well, well, well I prefer the older one to this, but I prefer this to the electronic handle ones with the piston grip because they're just not very good for getting around little bits and bobs. And finally, we have the, um, I think this is the Fibertech tool, just without the Fibertech branding. Again, quite used. Yes, it is the Fibertech, it's under there. Plastic base plate. This is not a bad tool, actually. I quite like this when we use it on the Amazon basic cleaner. I've used it downstairs with mums. It's, it's quite a nice forehead. It doesn't rust unlike the metal base plate mirror tools always seem to do, which is an added bonus, I shall be honest. <sighs> so there we go. We have a complete vacuum cleaner, which is not bad, however, Having a complete vacuum cleaner is no flipping good if I've got to sell all that for spares because this doesn't work. So, we shall start to fault find. And I shall start to fault find by setting my multimeter to, he says with it, oh it's very dusty. Well, it should be set to continuity, but it's not being very continuous. This isn't, this isn't the good multimeter, I don't think. So we shall find a different way to check the fuse I have here. Oh, which you haven't seen yet, and wait for what a Panasonic MCE 42M. If I go tuck it in, hang on. Nah. <laughs> Works very well indeed. So we have ourselves. Oh, where's my screwdriver? I really must start being more prepared, shouldn't I? Oh, come on, I just want a flat blade screwdriver. I do not care what, where, when, how or what. You're massive, but you'll probably do. We have a known work... Oh God, this plug is disgusting. A known working fuse. This is... 
Hang on. That's better. We have a known working fuse, because I haven't checked the fuse yet. I'll be honest. Obviously I like to do all this on video. There's no point in me spending half an hour playing with it at home and then showing it working. Where's the fun in that? So we should take out the Busman 13 amp fuse, fit it into the glorious, if not completely date, irrelevant MK plug, which I've been told I can have off of this modern Panasonic when I refurbish it, for the person who I refurbish it to. It's not the fuse, so I'll pop this one in because it works and 5 amp will be more than enough. The next thing we should possibly check is the cable, which is very, very short. But, very, very undamaged. Another trick with Mila is, if you can, check, you can't really, check inside the cord reel to see if it's broken, but you can't see it in there. So we best take it apart a bit. And I've never taken one of these apart a bit. So this is all a little bit of an unknown. We'll stick the cable back in, which is very, very loopy because it's been in the stone cold shed for months now and see what we've got to do now it looks like I can take this cover off very easily and get that out of the way oh we have a date wheel from 2012 come on this is six years old feels brand new with that out of the way we'll get the bag out and that and that Ah, we can see two screws which may or may not hold the key to getting this apart. I also need to now find the right size Torx screwdriver. <sighs> um, oh God, bear with me again. It's not one of my lovely long ones, but I don't appear to have one of my lovely long ones on me, so it's a little bit pointless to worry, but it does just about fit. I think I last used the long one that fits these in the car, because obviously French cars seem to like these silly Torx screws as well, and I think I left it in the shed. So well, we'll find it, we'll get them back in. If needed. Not quite sure where to go from here though, folks. Uh, uh -huh. Yep. How does one of these come apart? I don't, I don't think I've ever had one of these in for anything. Really? Uh, do, 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 do. Nope. See, there's lots of other screws, but I can't help but think that they're at, they're to take the whole casing off. I don't want to take the whole casing off. I just need this switch assembly off. There is the switch itself. Ah, hang on. This is why I don't do strip downs on air very much unless I've done a couple before. I know exactly what to do because it's just basically me going, um, quite a lot. 
which is not much fun. So, let me pause and get these off and come back. Ha ha! <laughs> Gotta push these two tabs back. Which you can actually get to just with the pedals on, although it is easy to pull the pedals out. And then you can get it back. So here's how the, the power control works look, it's like a sort of snake. The whole thing feels incredibly, incredibly cheap. <sighs> right, now we have the switch assembly, which does just lever up, like so, and reveals a switch which does seem to work. If I can get anything on my multimeter to work, it couldn't be that the speaker's not working. If I can, but the numbers did do something, so hopefully. Uh, what's the ohms up there? I just want to check if it actually works. There's 162, and none. So it is not the switch. We're going to have to go a bit deeper, folks, I think. All right, let's leave it up because there is a screw right in there. I don't know, will this screwdriver do? Wouldn't that be handy? No, it's just too big. So we'd best get the whole casing apart and see what the problem actually is. So with one, two, three, four, five, six screws are done, hopefully. A little bit more prodding and prying than should really be necessary from Amila, I have to say. Um, we should, might be able to release it. Release, release the top housing from the lower. God, this isn't as nice as the S5 or the S7. Even the S7 came apart at least easier, even if it wasn't easier construction. If it was an easier, all the parts came apart better. It's all clipped all the way around. Definitely not missing any screws. Nope. Really? Like this. Ow! Ow! Oh my ow! What is going on? Have I missed a screw? No, that's just where it's dropped into its hole. So now it's a really sharp angle. <laughs> that's easy if I've released a big massive clip that seems to hold it all together we have lift off wow it was that big clip there and now we can see the guts of this machine right here that obviously should be like that it's just popped off a little bit which is fine it can stay popped off we have the motor, which doesn't seem burnt out, but one can't really tell without taking it all apart. 
it seems like okay, we can now have a better look at the cold meal which seems fine really both the connections are on it there's no sort of plug like there is on the older ones so you can't quite tell as easily this time it's just come unplugged let's have a look here nothing's blown off of the PCB that's all okay but to my eye anyway obviously to check properly one would need proper tools Ooh. this is a bit of a mystery I wonder if it is a break in the cable but we've just gone a little bit far but we need to get this far to check let's have the motor out which is looking like it's been a bit wet actually but seems okay as in it, it spins I'd rather not go tear straight into the motor really both the wires on the back of the cable rewind let's have a closer look perhaps at the cable itself to see if that is broken or not right. now that I can get to the back terminals of the cord reel we can, in theory, check that we have a live connection. And a neutral. So there is, there is nothing wrong with the cable itself. We can then, in theory anyway, buzz those cables from the cord rewind to, and I need to just check, it's this one here, yep, and I think this black one, no, not that black one. That'll be this one then, straight to the switch. Yep. If I turn the switch on, this one turns into that one from the switch. So we have power everywhere. It is looking like it's the motor, isn't it? It is indeed. Let me get a new a sacrificial piece of cardboard And eventually, ah, this this screwdriver might be a little bit better. Yes, knock off the fan case, which is coming. Come on, you bugger! There we go. Now we need to take off the fan. Which I don't think I'm going to be able to do because I I don't have my socket set on me. I wasn't quite expecting this. Uh, um, 
a piece of scrap carpet because this might get a bit carbony so with a 30 millimeter socket and a cloth so I don't shred my hands on this fan which I have done before on fans that's much easier so we have a nut we have the spacer washer and the fan which is going to need a washout you can't really see that there but it is very covered in rubbish we then have another space amount and we can see oh, we can see the screws for the top motor casing have a bit of a closer view so we can open these now I'm basically tearing into this on a hunch something which I have seen before on a Mila in fact it was my first ever Mila a black S5 from FreeCycle had this very issue and basically if it's not this I, I don't quite know what it is and need to go away a bit better and have a look so we shall see. I need the toolbox just slightly out of reach here. That looks sweet to get this a tap. There we go. Oh now that's oh damn it. Right, I've moved everything. So I was, I was hoping to see the carbon brushes in but I can't but they're okay they're not perfect this machine has seen some use it does seem but they're certainly not destroyed the armature I have seen worse come on focusing this on yeah you get the idea it's not terrible 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 which is a little bit annoying and the next thing we need to look at is this wiring harness in here which is basically the reason that we've got to take the whole thing apart anyway because in here sits the thermal cutout for the machine yes and the reason that I like to see the thermal cutout for the machine this is the exact same reason that my ones were not quite so blatant Hang on. I'm going to go. I'm going to zoom out so that it will actually focus. There we go. This is the thermal cutout and the wiring loom for the motor. So this is where the loom plugs in, and these two here are what send the power off. Not quite sure what that chap is. I'm sure someone can tell me. This chap is the thermal cutout that it all runs through. And if we look on the back, look, we can see a burn mark. Now, when I had mine. The leg had completely blown off. This just seems to have done that. If I get a brush and we'll give it a bit of a clean off, this is what happens when you use mealers with pattern parts, bags, so they just can't cope at all. So, what I'm hoping is. So if we just drop a solder on that leg, which is completely loose and not really connected at all, in fact, we probably bend it over, but we'll do it properly. I think I've got some solder on me. We'll solder that back on. Right, soldering iron is on. You are zoomed right in to here. Look at my massive finger. But this is the fan. It's gonna need a good wash. This is not going to happen in this video this video is purely just to get the thing working really to see the armature isn't bad that's okay the bearings 
are a touch dry, but they're okay. They can be greased up. Carbon brushes are okay. I've seen worse. It's the way it focuses on them. Because they're so shiny. Shiny, shiny, and the whole thing is just disgusting. So this poor thing has seen some abuse, it must be said. How are we doing with the soldering iron? Are you melting the solder yet? No, not yet. So we need to wait a little bit for that. And I'll come back when it's actually ready to go. Right, we have heat. So we'll warm this up. It had just blown a hole clean through the track for the PCB, which is interesting. So hopefully get some heat through it. And we can solder it back together on. The tip's hot but it's not transferring the heat yet through the component. I mean, the solder isn't going to win any awards but it doesn't flip it after it's just got to work. On one side, I just want this other side to be done now. If I hold it in place, it should heat up, and then eventually we'll just see it suck there. Oh, there we go, we've got movement now. Just needs to suck the solder. There we go. One. Nice blob of solder. Well, I say nice. People who actually do solder are probably crying inside a little bit. But that is there. That is on. It sat on top rather than gone in. But hopefully it's made a connection with that little bit of silver there that has blown apart. Just unplug the iron. Put the solder back in there. It will do as a proof of concept, I'll be honest. Now this only goes back in here one way, so that's nice and simple. And that clips in there. Again, only goes in one way. We can put the whole machine back together.
actually work. Well, let's plug it in. Absolutely terrible. That's that fan. It smells carbony. Which are those carbon brushes? Oh, I don't know. doesn't smell too bad now, I think that's just where we disturbed, although that armature will clean up well. It sounds flipping awful though, that'll be that fan. That could do well with a wash. Right, let's tidy up this rubbish and we can go back to what we should have done at the beginning of the video and had a look at how it works, which isn't that great. The sand came out a little bit more than I was hoping for, so whoops but we have some man about mess down i'm going to put these tools on the hose end because they are very much in the way up at the top there we go so that's how that should look all nicely nicely we'll get a bit more cable out and we'll stick it on max and see if it will suck this up without exploding um, i'm going to put it somewhere where it's not in the way now because these ones are very tall well, we got all the sand up on pretty much the first pass, but there's all of the Cheerios. Let's turn it down a little bit and see if it can pick those up without so being glued to the floor. that sounds delightful but it does work very very well actually that's not bad at all not bad at all and in my bag of random stuff which is just off camera i have a genuine Mueller turbo brush so let's just see what the airflow is like from min to max <laughs> That really does make it sound terrible. But, sounding terrible or not sounding terrible, we have a fixed machine. Yes, we do. That was very simple. I'm glad that I've had that before so I could remember how, to, how it happens, as in, you know, what the problem is. I shall put the ones there. In fact, that works out way because I've got the floor tool on the other one part and that one sits there. So maybe, ah, maybe that's how it works. That 
that is. There we go, that's how you do it. And although it's by no means you know, good, let's be honest, it's still rather clunky. I'm going to put my camera way up there to get it to show the hose being all over the place. But yeah, that's all right then. So I can now put this in the pile to be refurbished, this cheap, almost nasty, but still not too bad. Very, very filthy. That is pretty much destroyed, as you can tell. Mina S2111. <sighs> so, not bad for a freebie, so to make a car back, but I think we can make it work just a little bit better. Hopefully the next time you see this, it will. So, thank you very much for watching. And I hope this has been informative. If your meter has just died and you check the cable, the fuse, the plug, some of the wiring, oh, go straight to that. I've seen it on an S5. I've now seen it on an S2. Sure, there's countless more besides. They all use the same thermal cutout. They all use the same motor. All the meters from the S5 onwards, in fact probably earlier ones, no, the early ones had the circuit board on the side of the motor like Hoover Master and Yellow Mila. S5 onwards with this style of motor, the S5, the S7, the S8 probably, all of them after that had the thermal cutout mounted like so. But enough of me, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye bye.